Hey everyone, today's lesson is gonna be chapter six of the My Lady textbook, which is one of my favorites, although I know some students can't stand this. Chapter six is general anatomy and physiology. I have found in classes that I have been in um, to do a lecture or to sub for that exactly half of the course cannot stand anatomy and physiology and the other half of the course completely loves it and they geek out. I personally, when I was in cosmetology school, could not stand it. I thought it was the most stressful chapter, it was very annoying, um, but then I actually kind of came to grow and grow in anatomy and physiology. I actually took an anatomy course in my undergrad and I really loved it. So, you know, as a cosmetologist, when we are um, talking about, you know, doing hair, doing hair, skin, nails, makeup, we're actually using anatomy and physiology even though we may not know it. So for example, when you're um, cutting hair, for those of you that cut hair, we have the occipital bone. That becomes one of our foundation areas for cutting. We know um, for makeup artists, if you are doing makeup on someone's face, you're using areas of the face. If someone has an injury, we have to know how to make it look like it never happened. Principles of hair design, we use anatomy and physiology on the shape of the face, um, all of that on how to best suit your face and make it look like the oval, which is the ideal shape. So whether we love it or not, we need to know the basics of anatomy and physiology, and this is like 1 16th of the anatomy that we learn in college, so it actually is not that bad. It gets a lot worse if you decide to either go back to school or do uh, additional courses for your own enrichment. So read the little snippet up there on why you need to know anatomy. Um, know that anatomy, it's a study of the human body and structures that can be seen with the naked eye and how the body parts are organized. So anatomy is kind of like, you know, pointing to something, oh, that's the stomach, that's the spleen. It's what we see, it's not microscopic. It can be, but for the most part, anatomy is what we just look at. I will say that if you get the chance, um, if your school offers it, please go to an anatomy museum or the Human Body Museum in New York. You will learn a lot about the structures and how they're organized, and it really drives it home. Even though it's more information than you need to know, it's always good to have that information. Know that physiology is a study of functions, activities that is performed by the body structures. You'll notice this a lot in cosmetology. The O-L-O-G-Y, the ology ending, means the study of. So, physi, function, ology, study of function. Know that histiology is microscopic anatomy. It's a study of structures found in living tissues. So you can do histiology of skin, which talks about the little microorganisms, not microorganisms, microorgans, um, little pieces of the cells that make them different. You cannot study anatomy without knowing how cells work. Cells are the most basic units of life. It's the smallest thing you can be before you're considered not living. Life starts with the cell. So without cells, life does not exist. You know, if we didn't have active living cells that were growing and dividing, we would not exist. We wouldn't be living. Know that cells have basic structures. There is protoplasm. It's a colorless, jelly-like substance found inside the cells. And in the protoplasm, you'll find proteins, fats, carbohydrates, minerals, salts, and water. Think of, they use the example of an egg. If you have an egg, you have the shell, which is kind of like the membrane. The um, egg white is kind of like the protoplasm, and the yolk is the nucleus. Nucleus is the dense, active protoplasm found in the center of the cell. It plays an important part in the cell for reproduction and metabolism. The nucleus is where we store our DNA, actually. That's all very important to have in your nucleus. The cytoplasm is the protoplasm of a cell, except for the protoplasm in the nucleus that surrounds the nucleus. It is the watery fluid that cells need for growth, reproduction, and self repair. So the cytoplasm is almost like the cell's blood, if you will. It keeps it nourished and functioning. And your cell membrane is this part that encloses the cell. You have your membrane like this, it keeps the insides of the cell from bursting out. And on your cell membrane, you'll actually have little receptors, and that's how the cell gets nourished. So know that cells must need to grow and reproduce, and how they do that is through the process of mitosis. It's the usual process of cell reproduction. It's how we heal from a cut and a wound. If our cells did not produce mitosis, we would die from a cut, we would essentially flow out or our body would start to rot. Uh, in cancer, cancer is actually an overdrive of cells where the cells can't stop dividing. So there needs to be homeostasis, a balance. Know what centrioles are. And here's a fun fact about centrioles. When people talk about cloning and all this, 
One of the issues on why cloning doesn't always work is because there's issues with centrioles. Centrioles are like fibers that hold the cell together and prep it for division. Know that if there's unfavorable conditions, disease and injury occurs. So cells must also use metabolism. So if you've heard the term metabolism, you know, if someone is super thin, they may have a really good metabolism. If they're, they're not thin, they may have a bad metabolism. But there's actually cellular metabolism. So it's a chemical process that takes place in living organisms. There's two phases of metabolism. There's anabolism, which is the constructive metabolism, the process of building up larger molecules from smaller ones. During this process, the body stores water, food, and oxygen for the times when these substances will be needed for cell growth, reproduction, repair. So anabolism, building up. Catabolism is the phase of metabolism that involves breaking down of complex compounds within the cells into smaller ones. This process releases energy that has been stored. Know that anabolism and catabolism are carried out simultaneously and continuously within the cell. So think of um, when we eat food, we're eating large macromolecules. We need to use catabolism to break them down. Likewise, if we have all these little amino acids in our body that are stored, our body will need to use anabolism to maybe uh, build structures such as new skin, new hair, um, heal our stomach, heal our wounds. These are all processes that are important for us to build substances. Our body actually, and this is why we can't live forever, it's constantly in metabolism. And if you look up all the theories for immortality, you'll learn that there is a limit because of metabolism. So you know that tissues, when we talk about um, cells, look up the chart on the hierarchy of life. You'll see from cells to tissues to um, organ, organ systems, and so on and so forth. Tissues are actually a collection of similar cells that perform a particular function. Some examples are connective tissue, our joints, how our body's connected and how they move. The body will use adipose tissue, which is a technical term for fat. It contours the body. If we don't have a lot of fat, you notice that our face kind of sags. Know that epithelial tissue is a protective covering on body surfaces, such as skin, mucous membranes, and tissues inside the mouth the lining of the heart, digestive system, respiratory organs, and the glands. Know that muscle tissue, that's connective tissue, it's how we move, we flex. Nerve tissue carries messages. If there's an interruption in our nerve tissue, we have a brain injury. So know that organs are structures composed of specialized tissues designed to perform specific functions in plants and animals. Body systems are known as systems. They're a group of body organs acting together to perform one or more function. Look at your table. You'll have the brain that controls the body, eyes for controlling vision, heart for circulating the blood to keep us alive, kidneys for getting rid of waste and water, lungs, <sighs> breathing, liver, it removes waste created by digestion, skin, it covers our body. It's what we work on when we do skincare services. Stomach digests food along with intestines. Intestines digest food along with the stomach. Know that there, these systems um, are important for your test. You'll kind of get like a, a phrase saying, which system is this? It'll be matching. That is definitely on your test. Another very important system is the skeletal system. It forms the physical foundation of the body and it has 206 bones. That is a test question right there. They vary in shape and size. Know that osteology is a study and anatomy, structure, and function of the bones. Os means bone. It is used as a prefix for many medical terms, including osteoarthritis, a joint disease. The functions of the skeletal system are for giving shape and support to the body. Protecting various internal structures and organs serves as attachment for muscles and acts to lever to produce body movements. Know that except for tissue that forms the major parts of teeth, bone is the hardest tissue in the body. It is composed of connective tissue consisting of about one-third organic matter, such as cells and blood, two-thirds minerals, mainly calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate. Knowing anatomy and physiology too, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but it's very important to know this to prevent disease and also make health decisions, um, whether you're going to your doctor and talking about health options or assessing your own risk for diseases. One of the major issues for um, bones is osteopenia and osteoporosis. Osteopenia happens before osteoporosis, and when we're in the salon, if we're getting older, a lot of you know a lot of people are living longer. A lot of people are working longer in these days. You'll see stylists in their 70s or 80s. One of the biggest issues for them is carpal tunnel, which is from repeated movements, 
and osteoporosis, which is a bone disease that can lead to fractures very easily. It's when our bones become porous. That's why we want to keep our bodies healthy. Here are your 11 main systems and their functions. The circulatory system that keeps our blood flowing. It consists of our vessels. Our digestive system, it allows us to um, digest food, obtain nutrients. Our endocrine system, which will affect the growth and development through chemical messaging. Our excretory system purifies the body, eliminates waste. It's your kidneys, liver, skin, large intestines and lungs. Know that your integumentary system is your protective covering. It helps us maintain a proper body temperature, helps us maintain homeostasis. Our lymphatic and immune system will protect the body by developing immunities and destroying disease-causing toxins and bacteria. Our muscular system shapes the skeletal system in place and it holds it in place. It contracts and helps us move. Our nervous system coordinates all other systems. It's part of our spinal cord and all that. Our reproductive system produces offspring and passes genetic codes from one person to another. Our respiratory system enables breathing and our skeletal system forms a physical foundation of the body. Read the Did You Know, because I think this is interesting. Humans are born with over 300 bones in their bodies. Then as we grow, some of these bones fuse together, so adults end up with 206 bones. Our bones and the marrow, actually, if you've heard of bone marrow transplant, it contains um, red and white blood cells. We can store our calcium and our minerals in our body, so in case we're at risk of a deficient, our body can release them. Know that a joint is a connection between two or more bones in the skeleton. Our skull, when we talk about our skull, we have the skull, which is the head, and it's divided into two parts. Our cranium, which is the essentially the oval bone that encases the brain. Our facial skeleton is the framework of the face, and it's composed of eight bones. One of our important, our occipital bone, we're talking about cutting a bob. We need to have an occipital bone. That's why some haircuts won't work for other people due to different bone shape. Know that the parietal bone is the bones of the sides, right up here. The sides and top of the cranium, there are two parietal bones. There's the frontal bone up here, which forms the forehead. The temporal bone that forms the sides of the head. The ethmoid bone, which is the light spongy bone between the eye sockets and part of the nasal cavity. Sphenoid bone is bone that joins all of the bones of the cranium together. And right here, this is an important um, part of the book, the ethmoid and sphenoid bones are not affected when performing services or giving a massage. There's 14 bones of the face, some of them like nasal bone, they're very straightforward. This is always interesting, when people complain about joint pain, the pain is usually caused by inflammation of the tissues surrounding the joint, not by the joint itself. So when someone says they have bone pain, it may not be actual bone pain we're feeling, but it's the muscle surrounding the bone that may be inflamed. I always think that's really interesting. Know that painful inflammation involving the carpus area can be caused by repetitive motions, such as flexing your wrist excessively or locking it in a bent position. Keeping the wrist straight can prevent these injuries. So when we're cutting hair and we're doing beauty services, it's important for good posture or ergonomics. Know that the some bones have different names, like the zygomatic bone, also known as the molar bones or cheekbones. Your neck has bones, read those, the main ones. The, um, the chest, you have your thorax, your pulmonary trunk, it's your sternum, ribs, and thorax vertebrae. You have, um, the one of the important ones is the phalanges, which is known as the digits or fingers. I always remember phalanges as fingers. I had a really good anatomy teacher in third grade. It was like anatomy and health that we did after we did gym and he was really good. He taught us that and it made it, made it stick with me. Know that your patella is your accessory bone or kneecap. Um, your talus is your ankle bone. Your tarsal, that is important to know, that will be in the test. Your muscular system is a body system that covers shapes and holds the skeletal system in place. Cosmetologists must be concerned with voluntary muscles that move or control the hands, arms, and lower legs and feet. It's important to know these muscles and what they control. These muscles can become, become fatigued from excessive work or injury. That's why when we know these muscles and how they work, we can perform our best doing massage services. They keep our clients coming back. 
when we have the muscles of the scalp, when we do scalp massage, it's very important. So many people get so relaxed and watch ASMR scalp massage on YouTube, or if you're in the salon and someone hits the right area, you're like, oh, please don't make it stop. At one of the salons I've been to, I knew one lady, um, everyone lined up to her to go to the shampoo bowl because she hit every single muscles in the scalp and you would practically fall asleep at the bowl. Knowing how um, people like their pressure, it's important. How firm we're massaging, I always ask them, how hot do you like your water? Um, how firm do you like the massage? And I try to give them a good service because once they get relaxed, they wanna come back to you. So know that myology is a study in nature, structure, function, and disease of the muscles. The human body has over 630 muscles which are responsible for approximately 40% of the body's weight. Muscles are fibrous tissues that have the ability to stretch and contract according to the demands of body's movements. There are striated muscles, also known as skeletal muscles, muscles that are attached to bones and are voluntary or consistently controlled. Non-serrated muscles, also known as smooth muscles, are involuntary and function automatically without us thinking about it. So some examples of voluntary muscles um, would be this. Striated muscles in my hand, if I move my hand, that's voluntary. An example of um, smooth muscles that are not voluntary are cardiac muscles. I can't control my heart's rate. I can't um, essentially stop my heart. My heart's gonna move whether I want it to or not. Cardiac muscles are involuntary muscles of the heart. A muscle has three parts, the origin, belly, and insertion. The origin is the part of the muscle that does not move when it's attached closest to the skeleton. The belly is the middle part of the muscle. The insertion is the part of the muscle that moves farthest and as far as it's from the skeleton. Pressure massage is usually directed from insertion to the origin. So you're going from the insertion and leading it back to the origin. You're not going to go from origin to insertion. Muscles can be stimulated by massage, electrical therapy, infrared light, dry heat, moist heat, nerve impulses, and chemicals. You have muscles of the scalp, such as your epicranius, the, also known as the occipital frontalis. It's the broad muscles that cover the top of the skull, and it consists of the occipital and front, occipitalis and frontalis. Your occipitalis is your back posterior position of the epicranius muscle that draws the scalp backwards. Almost makes us look like we have a facelift. Our frontalis, our front anterior portion of the epicranius, muscles of the scalp that raise the eyebrows, how we move, draws the scalp forward and causes wrinkles across the forehead. Epicranial apicnerus is tendons that connect the occipital and frontal muscles. Know that we have different muscles of the ear. Although these ear muscles have minimal movement in humans, some people can contract them and wiggle their ears. I do not have that ability to do so. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna stop this right here because we're getting close to that 20 minute mark, take a five minute break, and then when we come back, we're gonna talk about muscles of the neck.